The Charge of the Light Brigade by Lord Tennyson, published in 1854, from famous poems explained by Waitman Barb. The famous charge of the English Light Brigade, immortalized in Tennyson's poem, took place at the Battle of Balaklava during the Crimean War, October 25, 1854. Balaklava is not far from Sebastopol on the borders of the Black Sea. The story is a thrilling one of bravery and of obedience to orders. The full strength of the Russian army, covered from attack by thirty guns, lay at a distance of a mile and a half from the armies of the Allies, English, French, and Turks. Mackenzie's The Nineteenth Century gives these particulars. Up to this time our light cavalry brigade had not been engaged. Lord Lucan, their commander, now received by the hand of Captain Nolan a written order to advance nearer to the enemy. On reading this order, Lord Lucan asked its bearer how far they were to advance. He received a reply which he construed with fatal inaccuracy, to signify that it was his duty to charge the enemy. The light brigade made itself ready to attack the Russian army. Every man knew that some terrible mistake was sending the brigade to destruction, but no man shrunk from his duty of obedience. They rode straight down the valley towards the wandering Russians, and in full view of the chiefs of their own army, powerless now to restrain them. As the excitement of battle gained power over men and horses, the pace increased. The shot of the Russian guns tore through their ranks, but did not abate the speed of their advance, the fierceness of their attack. They galloped their horses between the Russian guns, cutting down the gunners as they passed. They rode down and scattered several squadrons of cavalry. And then they paused and turned back and galloped toward the shelter of British lines. The Russians reopened upon them with grape and canister. Their return was beset by an overwhelming force of Russian cavalry but they cut their way through and reached the position they had left scarcely half an hour before. Six hundred and seventy men went forth to that memorable ride, but only one hundred and ninety-eight came back. Murdoch's The Reconstruction of Europe says that the brigade would have been utterly destroyed, wiped out of existence, but for the brilliant and timely charge of a French company which attracted the attention of the Russians away from the English. The Charge of the Light Brigade by Lord Tennyson Half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death rode the six hundred. Forward the light brigade! Charge for the guns, he said. Into the valley of death rode the six hundred. Forward the light brigade! Was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply. Theirs not to reason why. Theirs but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the six hundred. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell, boldly they rode and well into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell rode the six hundred. Flashed all their sabres bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabring the gunners there, charging an army while all the world wondered, plunged in the battery smoke, Right through the line they broke. Cossack and Russian reeled from the sabre stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not the six hundred. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon behind them volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell while horse and hero fell. They that had fought so well came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell, all that was left of them left of six hundred. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made! All the world wondered! Honor the charge they made! Honor the light brigade! Noble six hundred! <laughs>